studio by the journalist Nabila Ramdani, who writes about Islamic issues, among other things. Welcome to you. And joining us from our studios in Oxford is Imam Dr. Taj Hage, who's from the Muslim Educational Centre of Oxford. Good afternoon to both. Um, Dr. Taj no. Hage, why are you in favour of this law that's come into force today in France? Well, because it's not part of the Quran. I mean, this, this idea of face masking is a tribal convention that predates Islam. There's no religious foundation for it. And when women are, say that it is religiously incumbent on them to wear this, uh, this face mask, this is totally untrue. If they were to argue this is a cultural fad, it's a tribal practice from their homelands, that's a different matter. They cannot use Islam to justify this cultural fad. And this is the main reason. Of course, there are other reasons as well. It's a health hazard. It's a security risk. It disempowers women. You know, it. Uh, uh, is discriminatory towards men. Myself, for example, I can't wear a balaclava down the streets of uh, any city in, in, in the UK without being stopped. Yet a, a woman can conceal her face and, and hide her, uh, herself. This, this type of double standard must stop. And it's not a civil rights matter. This is a matter about, you know, whether we want a Saudi, Wahhabi, Taliban type of Islam in, 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 in the United Kingdom or in Europe. And we should be quite clear that this is not, I repeat, a civil rights matter. A number of points there, but uh, you heard right at the start, this is not part of the Quran. Well, this is the fundamental point about this law, and Dr. Taj has evidently not read the text of the law. It doesn't mention a single time the word Islam. The law is very much about banning face coverings. And the paradox is that you, a woman is perfectly allowed to walk out of her house with a crash helmet, a fancy mask, a fencing ski mask, whatever, and she will be perfectly entitled to do so. But if she goes out of her house wearing a niqab or a burqa, she would be arrested and fined that there will be dramatic consequences for the alleged person who is forcing her to do so. And the law is about, it claims that it uh, liberates women. In fact, it's achieving the exact opposite because by preventing a woman to go about her daily life and there I say walk in the street it's achieving the exact opposite it's depriving her of freedom it's effectively putting her under house arrest well, what about the fact that the, uh, the the punishment for anyone who is can be proved to be forcing the individual to do this actually what's interesting is the punishment for them is far far higher there's a much potential higher fine they could even go to prison is that not the French state whatever you think of it trying to send out a message saying that no one, whether they're male or female, no one should be told what to do, how to live their life. It's, I, it's very much a sinister uh, a state intervention into religious matter. And the law is based on several assumptions, and one of them being that women are indeed forced into wearing the forbe. Nobody has even bothered going to talk to these women. Only 2,000 of them are wearing the niqab. One woman only, one woman only has been heard during the parliamentary debates preceding the implementation of the law. Now, the assumption is that men are forcing them to do so. I've spoken to a vast majority of these women, they're telling me, for us it's a liberating tool. We want to wear it, it's our choice. What do you do? Well, let's put that point to Dr. Taj. Uh, what do you say to that point? Uh, that it, actually, it, it, it's it, a it, fundamental it, it, assumption that women are being forced. No, I mean, it's not a, a liberating tool for them. They've been brainwashed, conditioned by a male clergy to say, listen, this tribal rag, this cultural cloth is part of Islam. Now, if you repeat a canard, an untruth, long enough, people actually believe it. So this notion that somehow these women have chosen by themselves. Now, many of these women in France, apparently the 2,000 odd, most of them are Wahhabi, Salafi oriented, and many of them are French converts. Now, we all know what French converts or any other converts to any religion, they become more Catholic than the Pope. And so here we have these... Uh, French converts, British converts, who feel, ah, then they're going to be a, a, a true Muslim are wearing the burqa, wearing the beard. And this is not Islam. Islam mm -hmm. is not to, to do with superficial symbolism. And Dr. Taj, to, uh, to, if I may and, and for interrupt. anyone to defend that, I think this is nonsensical. Let, let Nabila just come in and answer some of those points. I am quite baffled by the intolerance of someone who is, in fact, an imam and a, an Islamic scholar patronizing women, telling them that what's good for them, and telling me, who's interviewed those women, that these women are not making this by, uh, by choice, but they are forced to do so. And there I say, even if some of them are forced to do so, there is ample legislation at the national level in France, at the European level, to deal with any form of abuse against women. It doesn't need a blanket legislation which 
sole aim is to stigmatize a religion and Muslims uh, as a whole. Yes, and what we should be doing, and what we should be doing, is to develop a strategy to counteract this. We should be laughing at that and mocking them, ridiculing them, because it's not part of Islam. And then, and then we need to educate them to, uh, and to uh, inform them, and then to empower them, as so I that, said, so the that they make, so that they the make an informed Islam. choice. It's about human they rights, make an informed Dr. choice. They make informed choice themselves. They've only been given male readings about the Quran, male interpretations of the Burqa and Niqab. No female scholars Again, have come you're behaving up with this. Like the French state, you're assuming a lot of things. No, I'm not assuming anything. You are. You are saying, listen, this thing is an Islamic thing. It's not an Islamic thing. They should argue truthfully. It's a cultural phenomenon. Why do they use the word Islam? I'm saying Why it doesn't do matter the whether it's religion? religious or because, cultural. Be, it's to do with the law they, and they with the values cannot, of French cannot Republic, produce, which should inclusive, They cannot produce any Quranic evidence. Faiths. They can't produce a single verse from the Quran where the word niqab is used, where the word burqa is. Now, if it they is cannot provide, debate, if they cannot provide this, it's to do with the law. French parliamentarians are behind this law. If they can't provide this, why say it? Dr. Why Dr. give this text? Just, just for one moment, in terms of uh, the, the state and, and the, the specific situation in France, Nabila, uh, Nabila Ramdani, um, it's interesting that our correspondent in Paris has been telling us, yes, okay, there's been this relatively small demonstration outside Notre Dame, but actually, broadly, he was making the point there hasn't been a vast amount of debate about the entire law within France. There hasn't been a huge uprising against it. W what's your take on, on the reasoning behind that? Well, it reflects the, uh, uh, the, 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 the fact that there is no need for such a debate when it concerns only 2,000 women. And in actual fact, there has been a debate taking place last week initiated by the interior minister about the negative influence of Islam with the interior minister saying that Muslims are a problem in France and I would argue that Muslims are the ones who are being discriminated against they are the victims of institutional racism in France and if the states were genuinely concerned about the place of Muslims within the French Republic it should first of all enforce very strong anti-discrimination laws to ensure that Muslims are not discriminated against okay there we have to leave it Nabil.